Hi, in this video we will be discussing about thyroid hormone. It is usually asked as an essay question of 15 marks and it can also be asked as a short note or an answer briefly question. So first let's see a sample question. A 30 year old female present with features of increased weight despite reduced appetite then uh, cold intolerance. So answer the following questions based on your knowledge in physiology. So uh, name the most probable condition, discuss the steps involved in the synthesis of the hormone, what are the physiological actions and mention the test. So see the main questions are the steps, the action and the test. So first let's uh, answer the first question, what is the most probable condition? See the subject presented with increased weight despite uh, it reduced appetite and cold intolerance. So all these symptoms point to hypothyroidism. It is in hypothyroidism that there is increased weight, decreased appetite and cold intolerance. Okay. Now the next question was uh, what are the steps involved? So let we know the basic steps in the synthesis of thyroid hormone are iodide trapping, conversion of iodide to iodine, thyroglobin synthesis, coupling reaction, proteolysis of thyroglobulin and secretion of thyroid hormone. So whenever synthesis is asked, it is important that you also draw a diagram. So this diagram is taken from the textbook of physiology by Guyton and Hall. We will just quickly see how we can draw it. So first you can draw an outline of the thyroid cell and then we know the first step is iodide trapping, right? So it is it occurs via the channel called sodium iodide symporter. So this particular channel transports iodide against a concentration gradient and this is called sodium iodide symporter and for this it requires energy. So there is a sodium potassium ATPase pump to help this sodium uh, iodide symporter. Now so this was the first step. Now our second step is conversion of iodide to iodine. Okay. So for that iodide is first transported out of the cell by the help of this channel called pendrin which is a chloride iodide exchanger and there this iodide is converted to iodine by the help of the enzyme peroxidase. So that is our second step conversion of iodide to iodine. Now the third step is thyroglobin synthesis. So thyroglobulins are produced from tyrosine in the endoplasmic reticulum and with the help of the Golgi bodies they are thyroglobulin is formed and this thyroglobulin again is secreted into this follicular space. So that was a third step which is thyroglobulin synthesis. Now the fourth step is the coupling reaction wherein the thyroglobulin gets coupled with the iodine to form MIT monoidotyrosine, diiodotyrosine, uh, T3, reverse T3 and T4. So this reaction is called the coupling reaction and that is a step 4. Now this thyroglobulin which is coupled is then taken into the cell by the help of pinocytosis. So by pinocytosis the thyroglobulin is taken up as a colloid droplets. Now our next step is proteases will act on these colloid droplets and then it will be converted to T3 and T4. So the action of proteases on these colloid droplets are, are our fifth step and the secretion of the thyroid hormone is a sixth step. So by this I think this is a very brief outline of the synthesis of thyroid hormone. Next we will see some physiological actions. So the thyroid hormone has effect on the basal metabolism, it has effect on the intermediary metabolism, it has effect on growth and some systemic effects. So you can remember this by the mnemonic big effects wherein B stands for the basal metabolism, I for intermediary, G for growth and effects for systemic effects. So now let's see one by one. So let's see the effect on the basal metabolism. So in general thyroid hormone increases the basal metabolic rate and it does so by increasing the sodium potassium ATPase activity. It also acts on the mitochondria and increases the synthesis of the mitochondrial cytochromes. So in general because of this increased basal metabolic rate there is increased consumption of the of oxygen. Okay. So uh, that is the effect on the basal metabolism. Next let's see the effect on the intermediary metabolism. So the term intermediate by intermediary metabolism we mean its effect on carbohydrate metabolism, uh, fat metabolism and protein metabolism. So on carbohydrate metabolism thyroid hormone will increase reabsorption of glucose from the small intestine 
and in the liver it will stimulate conversion of glycogen to glucose that is why we say it is it stimulates hepatic glycogenolysis it also induces gluconeogenesis and thereby increases the plasma glucose level transiently non fat metabolism it stimulates lipolysis and it causes a significant decrease in the plasma cholesterol level now this is one factor which thyroid hormone decreases which is the cholesterol so how does thyroid hormone decrease cholesterol it acts on our liver cells and increases the ldl receptors so thus all the cholesterol that is present in the blood will be taken up by the liver and thus the blood cholesterol will decrease next on protein metabolism it stimulates proteolysis in the skeletal muscles so because there is proteolysis is stimulated there will be more release of amino acids and there will be increased protein turnover by promoting protein degradation so that was about effect on intermediary metabolism now let's see the effect on growth and development so in general thyroid hormone stimulates growth so it acts on our bones and causes an increase in linear growth of the bone it also stimulates endochondral ossification it uh, stimulates maturation of the epiphyseal bone centers and also the uh, it also stimulates the chondrocytes moreover it also stimulate the release of growth hormone from the pituitary so by all these actions they stimulate the growth and development in our body next we'll see about the systemic effects so first let's see about the effect on cardiovascular system in the cardiovascular system it produces tachycardia it increases the myocardial contractility and increases the systolic pressure so here you can remember it as it in general increases everything that means it increases heart rate increases myocardial contractility and increases systolic bp next we'll see about the nervous system see it is very important in the development of the central nervous system and also for maintenance that is why in congenital hypothyroidism the children are usually mentally retarded it so thyroid hormone helps in the development normal development of the cerebral cortex it is also important for the development of the synaptic connections and also for the myelination of the neurons thus it also has an effect on the reaction time what is reaction time it is the speed speed and amplitude of the stretch reflexes that is why in hypothyroidism we generally have a sluggish ankle jerk now we'll see the effect on the respiratory system it stimulates the rate of respiration and also increases the supply of oxygen to the tissues and increased utilization of oxygen so because there is increased respiratory rate there is also increased oxygen supply and moreover it will stimulate increased utilization of oxygen too and in the gastrointestinal system it enhances the motility of the gi tract that is why in hypothyroidism we may have constipation in hyperthyroidism we may have diarrhea it increases the motility of the gi tract it also increases the appetite and food intake that is why in our question we said it must be hypothyroidism because the subject had reduced appetite now we'll move on to the diagnostic test so in general we know the important tests are estimation of the thyroid stimulating hormone and estimation of t3 and t4 why are both of them important see we know it is a thyroid gland which produces a t3 and t4 but it does so under the influence of tsh which is produced by the pituitary so if there is a hyper or hypothyroidism there can be a problem either with the thyroid gland or with the pituitary so in order to differentiate where the lesion is we, we have to do both tsh as well as t3 and t4 we can also do imaging procedures like uh, ultrasound ct scan and mri so these are the basic investigations that must be done in order to identify the cause or the uh, in order to diagnose the cause so now we'll just quickly uh, see a question again see here the patient had increased weight because in hypothyroidism there will be decreased bmr so naturally there will be increased weight gain there will be reduced appetite because of the effect of thyroid hormone on the gastrointestinal system and there is cold intolerance that is because thyroid hormone is a calorogenic hormone it will increase the body temperature so because there is hypothyroidism the patient will be more cold the temperature will be less so that is why he or she is she is cold intolerant okay so i hope the question is clear and you know how to approach an essay question like this so thank you